I would like to introduce you to today's presenter, Bianca Bauman. Bianca Bauman is a Senior Learning Strategist and Director of Learning Experience at GP Strategies, focused on digital education success, combining L&D and digital marketing to create outstanding learning experiences and strategies that help organizations meet their growth and revenue targets. She has spearheaded multiple projects in the marketing automotive, automotive financial and events industries, creating award-winning programs along the way. She shares her expertise in her blog and at global conferences, highlighting the importance of including disciplines outside of L&D to help organizations with digital transformations and reskilling of their, net or their workforce. She has also published an ebook titled The Little Black Book of Marketing in L&D, a practical guide that helps integrate proven marketing techniques into L&D. So Bianca, actually one thing um, we didn't talk about is maybe including a link to that in our follow-up email, so we will make sure that we do that. Um, and without further ado, Bianca, I will go ahead and turn this over to you. Excellent. Thank you very much, and thank you everyone for joining. Going to uh, jump right in. Uh, so in the time of automation and artificial in intelligence, there's a lot of new requirements that, that are coming at us as learning and development professionals. And uh, there's a lot of good research out there. One a source here that you see is actually from uh, PwC, and they're saying that 80% of CEOs actually believe the need for new skills is their biggest business challenge in the upcoming years. And that actually means for employees, people that we take care of every day, that opportunities for development is actually the second most important factor in their workplace happiness. So that's something you know we really have to keep uh, keep in mind because it means for us that our employees, the people that you know we're surrounded by every day, we actually have that growth mindset. We're really looking for new opportunities to develop ourselves, to learn from others, to share our experiences because we know how important it is to stay competitive. You probably heard a lot about the, the workforce of the future, what that means, uh, how jobs possibly or most likely will move from you know, the full-time jobs to more of a gig economy. So again, it becomes more and more important for everyone in your organization to have these opportunities to grow and develop. Uh, but what we're always faced with is that we have no time, right? We always hear that, oh, time training is really time taking me away from my, air quotes, real work, right? And we really have to find new and different ways of how we can allow our people to learn while they're actually working. And, you know, you know it, um, we see it every day that the urgency of work compared to learning, it's just, you know, work always gets in the way of learning. <laughs> so we spend about one third of our day, our work day on emails, uh, if not even more. And of course, we rarely use the LMS. The LMS is a place that, you know, we might go to if we have to take that, uh, you know, compliance training. But other than that, you know, we hardly go there. Often also it's a place where people don't like to go necessarily because it takes them, you know, 20 clicks to find the content. And so that combination of busyness at work, but also the difficulty of finding content that's really applicable to our learners creates this environment where learning is really important, but it's not urgent. And that is something we have to look at. That, that is something we have to change. And just real quick in the chat window, what do you think? How many minutes a day do people carve out for formal learning? So you can just put in the number one, two, three, four. So either five minutes, 10 minutes, 30 or 60. What do you think? All right. So we have a couple of people saying here that they assume it would be five minutes or even less. We have one person saying 10 minutes. I like it. Probably the keeners in the room that like to learn. Less than less than one. Yeah, exactly. Renee said, yep, she's the keener. <laughs> so, yeah, you are right. It's actually, uh, I love that Michael is saying 30 minutes. Uh, we have more keeners on the call. That's, that's amazing. And that's really what, what we would like to create. Unfortunately, this is based on some uh, verse and research. It's actually five minutes or less a day of formal learning. Uh, recently, I actually, my team, we did this fun little exercise where we 
thought about how much time we spend a week on informal learning. And uh, I would encourage you to do that exercise, to just sit down and write down the different sources of you know, informal learning. And you'll be quite surprised on you know, how much uh, actually adds up there. But uh, yeah, when it comes to formal learning, the LMS, you know, the training programs that we put our people through, it is really less than five minutes. Thank you, everyone, for putting your answers in the chat there. So we are what's known as the knowledge worker. That is who we are solving for. This is who we are ourselves. Uh, there's 780 million of us. And uh, again, we spend about one third of our day on email, but six and a half hours in front of a computer. That's a long time to be in front of a computer. But you know, flip this on its head and think about where we deliver training. How does that fit in? How does that fit into that workflow? So again, about 28% uh, on email, 19% of our time we just spend gathering information, right? We just go out there, we just research, we try to find solutions to uh, the work we do every day and reports we have to write and you know, emails we have to send out. And yeah, about 14% of our time we spend communicating internally and that could be you know, either digitally or uh, person to person. But gives you a really good idea of you know, roughly where we are, where we spend time, and then again, where we could come up with new ideas of how to integrate learning into the flow of work. So we must fit, we must fit that around our working days and our lives, that learning, where learning is happening. And uh, for that, uh, I briefly want to talk about this uh, graphic. And I know it might be a little bit hard to read, but uh, Kayla, I'm pretty sure we can send out a link to that as well or have the graphic in the email as a follow-up just to make sure you can take a closer look at that. And it looks quite overwhelming right now, but no worries. I, I'll kind of walk you through the different circles that we see here, the core, the inner, the outer, and the open. But really, it's all about where, where does our work get done or you know, what to use when. So that's really uh, what it's all about. And I know that often we look for learning programs that make a difference. We really want to have the newest and the best technology. But you know, often it's actually nice to take a step back and look at what are the tools that you already have available in your organization that you can leverage? How can you build community with, you know, um, for example, here the Microsoft Office Suite, something that most organizations have access to. If you are a Google shop, you know, this works just as well. Um, you would just have to translate the Microsoft app into the Google app. But the idea behind it is really the same. So let's start with you. Let's start with the core. Uh, that's really, you know, um, where everything revolves around you as the individual. And you want to think about this as that we can't be effective and productive uh, as a team member if we're actually not productive individually first. So we really got to, you know, get really good at becoming proficient and using our emails and our calendars, messengers, files, notes. So this is really, you know, where we spend a lot of time just getting organized. This is where we spend time with incoming and outgoing messages. So email, right? Again, one third of our days we spend here. And, but yeah, that, that's kind of where we usually start our days. Uh, you know, then you go into your calendar, you kind of check out what appointments you have for the day, what tasks you need to get done. And uh, you might also, you know, just capture some ideas and reminders um, in, in a notebook. So usually we work solo in the core, but often what happens here is that we just quickly interact with you know, some of our coworkers. We might just you know, send a file in an email, or um, you know, we were going to share our notes or tasks, or again, just emailing them back and forth. And usually if we collaborate in here, it's more ad hoc, right? Uh, might be one or two other people. And it's not meant to be where you know you have formal groups of workers that are dedicated that have a dedicated space for team-based collaboration. But again, it's that kind of that ad hoc, right? So lots of time that we spend here every day. So now, if you kind of think about that next um, loop, which is the inner loop, that is now where the teamwork piece comes in. This is where you know we co-author. This is where we share our screens. This is where we jump on a meeting and have voice and ideally video. Uh, this is where we leverage shared calendars, file sharing. So the biggest tool in the Microsoft suite in here is certainly Microsoft Teams. 
And um, it's funny, one of my teammates was actually saying the other day, oh, I didn't, you know, open up my emails about halfway through the day because I just open up Teams and I work from there because you have access to everything, right? So excellent collaboration piece for interaction between, you know, your close-knit teams. And, you know, if you work on a project basis, then, you know, your project teams would be in there. It could be your actual team, as you see it on the org chart. So teams here is also kind of, you know, um, a, a, a term that means different things depending on how your organization is set up. But uh, again, lots and lots of collaboration that happens here in that inner loop. And then we have the company-wide visibility or the outer loop. And uh, this is really where conversations and discovery across the organization is happening. So this is where you want to connect openly. This is where a lot of the working out loud is happening. This is where we want to interact and say, hey, I have this new project I have to work on, but no one within my project team or my org team really knows how to do this. Does someone else have an idea? This is where Yammer comes in. This is where you can have a social platform that allows you to you know, ask questions out there, to share you know, success stories, to share failures, to like other people's comments on a social platform. And uh, so that social aspect here is really, really, really kicking in. And the outer loop will connect employees to what they need when they really need it and it's not necessarily you know official information but if you know you learn from one another you start building that community you find co-workers that think like you and you share you share that experience right so again yammer is probably in sharepoint one of the biggest tools at this stage and then we go really outside of our company walls and this is you know where all the external communications are happening and you know to be honest i think that's where you know we don't do all of our work within our company walls a lot of times we go outside to learn and we see that all the time we create you know programs for our employees and then if they need to find out how to do something they go on google and figure it out they watch a youtube video right so i think when we create learning programs it's extremely important that we keep that in mind and allow our employees to go out there and learn and curate content because we do regularly learn from others. Think about LinkedIn, think about Twitter. For me personally, those are two sources I learn a lot from. I have a personal learning network on Slack that I use, which is all people from all over the world, but actually no one from within GP. So, um, right, so this looks different for everyone, but this kind of goes into what I was saying earlier, that little exercise that you could do to figure out how much of informal learning you actually do every day. And the beauty of this is that we can invite external users into our outer loop and into our in the inner loop or even, you know, into the core workflow of what we're doing through this open loop right here. So what do you think? There was a lot of information there. I just want to pause real quick and say, if you think about the core and the inner and the outer and that open loop, what are some other tools that you could uh, think about that your employees would use to efficiently work on their own, do, uh, do collaborate on a team within the organization or outside the organization? What are some of those tools? Yeah, so I, uh, there's an answer here. I really find value in association forums and groups on LinkedIn. Absolutely, they're great. Webinars and LinkedIn, Lisa says, yeah, that's a really good one as well. I already mentioned Slack, which is kind of teams a little bit. LinkedIn learning, yeah, that becomes bigger and bigger. And a lot of LMSs actually now allow organizations to connect directly to uh, LinkedIn learning as well, which is beautiful. So again, learning kind of in the flow of work, more or less. Uh, they're already there. Udemy and Coursera, yeah, Tristan, awesome. So that is what's outside of our organization often. And uh, yeah, Wendy's saying LinkedIn Learning is actually integrated into our LMS. Yeah, and you know, um, Teams really allows you to to integrate a lot of the different platforms that you are mentioning into it. So you know, people could just go to Teams and start taking training from uh, right there or learning from right there. Excellent. Keep this, those uh, thoughts coming. I'll just uh, move us forward, but. So what can you, oops, I hear a couple of beeps there. Everything okay? 
Yep, right. I heard you loud and clear. Okay, perfect, good. <laughs> so what can we do as an organization to kind of support the learning and the flow of work, the, the, cap uh, the, sorry, the community building, and now that we know how or where it could happen, well, you know, for yourself, the bottom up learning piece, if you think about uh, you want to practice metacognition and mindfulness, sounds very spiritual. But what I mean by that is, you know, you sit in meetings every day, most likely. What can you learn from other people? Look at them, follow them, read their body language, see how they are presenting, right? So uh, just to be very mindful of what's happening around you. Uh, it's always a great idea to let uh, our employees know to maintain a to-learn list. So that's just, you know, things you want to read on later, read up on later, bookmark them in your browser, you know, or have a list next to your computer where you really write down things that you want to look at later on. Uh, use tech-enabled tips as you work. If you remember Clippy in, in Microsoft, right, like back in the days, it was uh, poorly done, but the idea behind it was really great, and we see it more and more nowadays. There is platforms out there that allow you to do that, to overlay tips like that onto a software. And also just subscribe to a small number of newsletters. Not too many, because you're not going to read them. So really be very selective. Top down, what can an organization do, do to um, you know, allow learning in the flow of work? Well, you want to make sure that your knowledge systems are uh, accurate and easy to use, that they're connected. We just talked about LinkedIn Learning and the LMS, right? Look into APIs and how you can connect some of your technology to really in the flow of work. Uh, there's apps out there that allow you to do that. Uh, if you have um, you know, Teams or Slack, devote a channel in your corporate communication to learning, right? Or on Yammer, have a page where everyone knows they can go to learn more. You also, you know, if you have the option to integrate a chatbot, that's always a great option. So you can push that content. Sometimes you can even allow learners to pull content, but having that push pull is really important. And one of my favorites, you know, as Kayla was saying, I do focus on marketing and L&D, is actually leveraging email to deliver content. Remember I told you we're spending one third of our days on email? So why not leverage some of the content you already have in place, create an email course out of it, and then you know, push that out through email. And then if you really want to build a bigger campaign, you can even then build in the chatbot features or you know, some of your other knowledge systems that you have in place in your organizations, right? So there's really a lot, a lot of stuff you can do there. All right, so there's a lot of information here. So where would you go from here? I suggest first step is meet with your team, not just your internal team and your you know, org chart team, but really people that you think you, you know, they can help you make a big difference in your organizational setup and uh, get them in, bring cookies and coffee. Everyone always likes that. And just brainstorm idea on, on about, you know, where are we spending time right now? Where could we deliver training? And then just write down tools that everyone is already using. So no need to go out and, you know, spend big bucks but really you know, see what's there, what's in place, and then investigate how you can connect those existing tools and how you then can augment them with, for example, a chatbot or you know, APIs or whatnot. And then you know, um, it, it's really, really important from a marketing perspective as well to promote that learning in the flow of work. Just because all these tools are there and all of a sudden you start pushing out content doesn't mean your people will know what to do with it. So it's really important to manage expectations, set the stage, and you know, let them know like, hey, this is what's coming. This is what you can expect. And we want you to spend time in email. We want you to spend time in Teams because this is where we're going to push out the content for you. And with that, we're 20 minutes in. Any questions that you have? Yes, we did have several questions come in. Um, so what I want to do now is just um, with these few minutes that we have left for some Q&A, just send everyone a reminder um, that if you have a question, go ahead and put it into the Q&A module at this time. Obviously, um, Bianca quote, covered quite a bit in 20 minutes, and there is still more that we could discuss and dive deeper into. So I encourage you to continue the conversation with her beyond today's session. You'll see her contact information is available in the slide deck. Um, I would also like to remind you that the recording and slides from today will be sent to the email address that you provided when you registered. So I will go ahead and jump into some of these questions. Um, Bianca, what are other ways that you can build community at your workplace? 
Yeah, so I think one way of doing it, and we've probably heard about it as well, is communities of practice. So again, that would kind of fit into most likely that company-wide, uh, that outer loop that we talked about, because you're really looking for people that have, you know, common um, interests or that have common goals that then, you know, you can have, again, a Yammer page, for example, where you really encourage people to share their ideas, share their success stories, their failures. And for me, that also can go hand in hand with something more physical, where you actually have a wall in the lunchroom, for example, right? Where you have the wall of, uh, not the wall of shame, but the wall of uh, successes and, uh, and celebrations. So I think communities of practice would be a, would be a big one for me. And then what are some great examples of um, learning in the flow of work that you've seen? Yeah, so I think the biggest and the most exciting examples I've seen is, uh, is two things. So one is teams, uh, and it's actually something we're doing a lot within uh, GP Canada, that we're leveraging teams and adding tabs within teams that then allow us to just stay within teams and access success factors and access LinkedIn Learning and access Intrepid and all the beautiful platforms that we have access to. And uh, the other way for me is also, again, uh, what I briefly talked about, an, an email course. So instead of, you know, thinking about uh, an hour long training session that you would have face to face, you know, think about how you can actually break this out into smaller pieces. So when we think of a competitor training, for example, one great way of uh, teaching salespeople more about competitors is to push content out to them on a regular basis on, on Teams or Slack and inform them about, you know, the competitors that are out there and combine that with, uh, so an email and a chatbot and a chatbot that then also allows the salespeople to pull that content because if they're on a call with a client or a prospective client, the last thing they want to do is say, can I put you on hold for five minutes until I find the answer, right? They need to have the answer right now. So if they can say, okay, let me put you on hold for a quick second, they type the question into the chatbot and the chatbot actually tells them, hey, here's you know, what you're looking for, here's the answer. They go back onto the phone and say, hey, Mr. Prospective Client, here's the answer. So yeah, email, Slack and team, uh, Teams for me are one of the best examples I've seen uh, for um, learning in the flow of work. So one quick question to tie into that. Someone just said that they're not using Teams yet in their organization. Can you just explain really quickly or at a high level what Teams is and how it impacts the training function? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, apologies, I just assumed everyone heard about it. But uh, yeah, so Teams is a direct messenger um, setup. So that's kind of like the basic uh, of Teams. So if you if you're familiar with Skype, where you you know you can. Uh, send a direct message to one person or a group of people and you can have meetings. So Teams is Skype on, on steroids, so to say, because you not only have that chat functionality, but you can create a team within Teams. Uh, so for example, it could be around corporate learning. Uh, and then you have multiple channels in there. So you could have channels around emerging technology. You could have a channel on learning in the flow of work. You could have a channel on LMS, whatever it is. And then in there, people can, again, come together, share tips and tricks. But it also automatically creates a SharePoint site. So all documentation is then saved in one spot and everyone can work on the documentation uh, collaboratively, which again, if we think about learning in the flow of work, I think is a great way of uh, getting people more engaged and building community. So that's really it in a nutshell. There's many, many more functionalities to it, but hopefully that answers the question. Yes, thank you. And um, I want to be mindful of time. We're almost five minutes over for our Q&A. Um, we'll take one more question. Go ahead and keep your questions coming in here, though. And what we'll do is um, I'll talk to Bianca offline about maybe potentially doing a blog post to dive deeper into some of these. I imagine this next question might be one we dive deeper into. Um, can you talk a bit to multimedia technologies and more immersive platforms like virtual or augmented reality that support the need for learning in real time? Ooh, that's a loaded question and uh, a good question. And I don't know if I have an answer on top of my head right now in terms of, you know, the, the, the uh, performance need. Um, and what we can do too, since we're five minutes over, is go ahead and save that one and, and maybe you and I can chat about doing a blog post 
Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I can't see the question right now because if I could read it again, I think that would also help me come up with a with an answer right now. But honestly, right now, I can't think of anything on top of my head. Apologies. Nope, sounds good. Well, what we're going to do is um, go ahead and keep the questions coming in. I will leave this open for about another minute, but we'll go ahead and wrap things up for today. Uh, thank you again to Bianca Bauman, and thanks to everyone who attended for your time and attention. We do hope that you'll join us again for future webinars. Registration is available on our webinar page at gpstrategies.com. Um, I wish everyone on the call a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.